Dear friends, the time has come to reflect upon the words of God. We, we are starting a very important topic that we will discuss for the next five Saturdays. Uh, we will touch upon the ethics of the church. And we will talk about how to coexist together as a community of people with uh, different upbringing, with different level of education, with different wor work experience, with different even spiritual experience. And first of all, let's give definition to the Christian ethics. Uh, uh, a very successful definition we may see in the readings of Colossians, and I would like to read it with you, verse three, uh, chapter 3, and we will read from verse 1. Please open with me and we will read together. Colossians, uh, book of Colossians, and uh, chapter 3. Um, and we will start from first verse. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated as the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, on a covetous sense, which is idolatry. Uh, on account of this, the wrath of God is coming. This is a very successful definition we may see uh, about ethics. Bible does not just give us instruction. Our instruction about what, what we should do or should not. But also, Bible gives us principles to build our lives. Yeah. Bible has everything that we need to know about living Christian life. Yeah. Though it does not have description about all situations that we might encounter. So, how does it answer the question, question we might have about ethical dilemmas? And that is precisely the essence for Christian's life and for Christian ethics. Science the, defines ethic as a, as a set of moral principles or study of morality. In this case, Christian ethics are, a prince, are the principle, uh, principles that are taken from Christian faith and acted upon. It is true that the Word of God might show us all the illustrations, all situations that we might encounter in our life. And yet, it gives us the standard according to how we should act in certain situations without having clear instruction. Please look um, it's a definition that is given by theological dictionary. Christian ethics is the moral teaching of Christianity that determines the moral guidance of human behavior based on the Christian idea of the nature and purpose of man and his relationship with God. You know, Many of us raise questions about how to behave in certain events. 
What is the moral orientation of our behavior? I would like to share with you one, uh, one, uh, one story that happened with me. I remember one example from my previous pastoral experience. It was for Sabbath in, uh, in the new church when I was introduced. Uh, when I was introduced as, as usual, uh, I said sermon, uh, somebody from conference introduced me, and after the service worship, there was potluck with the congregation. And uh, we have time uh, to get in acquainted with people, to talk a little bit, to know each other better. And I had one member of the church who came to up to me and asked me, Pastor, I have Two theological questions, as he said. First question was about the number 666. Do you know something about it? I believe, yes. And how do I personally interpret it? I remember how I tried hard, you know, to answer such complicated question in such uh, an endless amount of time. You know, it's it's a complicated question. However, I realized that I have already lost my questioner. Sentences by sentences, but I lost him completely. I thought my explanation probably did not satisfy him or and he did not like it. I was just starting my pastoral ministry. It was important for me I was, I, I was trying to attract people, you know. <sighs> he was irrelevant <laughs> to my answer. I stopped answering that question and asked me, what, what is your second question for me? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, he, and, and he asked me, listen, his answer was, can you shave on Sabbath? Can you shave on Sabbath? This question was even harder than the previous. I knew that it was very conservative church and in such churches people believed they cannot shave uh, on Sabbath or you we cannot take a bus or, or something like that. But I, I had different opinion personally about this matter. I understood that if I will, I will answer honestly for this question, I could have started a lot of misunderstanding and uh, arguments on my, on, on my first day. It was first day <laughs> here. I could have started... Uh, however, you, you are not going to make something up that is not, uh, that is not in harmony with your living. Uh, you must be honest with people. Yes? You, you need to be honest. Amen. And you need to preach <laughs> how you live and, and everything. And I decided, decided to, to answer this question according to my personal uh, understanding. The man listened to me, said thank you and left from, from the church. Does not look encouraging, does it? Does not look encouraging. I was a little bit disappointed, uh, but you you cannot change, you know something. And after some time, I decided uh, to visit uh, this uh, that family to get to know them better. And when I came to to them, husband were running late, and his wife invited me. And she asked me, I, uh, if I remember the questions that her husband asked me before. I said, yes, I do. I remember. <laughs> I, I, I cannot forget. Then she said, you have answered this question well. He really liked your answer. He poses these questions to every pastor that comes to this church. He is testifying this way. 
testing this way, sorry. He liked your answer and plans and, um, and he, he, uh, uh, he has plans to, uh, on attending the church. But for me, it was, it was food for, for thinking, you know? It was his way to testing me or different pastors. But for us, it's an important question. Is the question of shaving on Sabbath theological or not? Is the question of shaving on Sabbath theological or not? It is breaking the law of God or is it breaking the rules of traditions and culture? The conflict that happens at church, a lot of conflict that happens at church, does not raise out theological questions, but raise, raise from personal beliefs based on personal tradition, worldviews, and uh, personal opinion. Conflicts arise, uh, conflicts arise from personal interpretation of the tradition. Churches have separated because of questions such as should we drink from one cup or a personal cup during the communion? I saw a couple churches that was separated. Can women wear pants? How to spread your time on Sabbath? Can you bring water to boiling point on Sabbath or not? The question of diet. If you, eat me if you eat meat, you will not get to heaven. It is seen to wear jewelry. Can we wear wedding rings? The opinion of another member of such church, of his or her reaction, vision of, her, of the situation becomes a stumbling block for others. That's right. Sometimes we just want to expose, to denounce the sin of the other. To tell the truth. We need to be honest. To tell the truth with somebody. But how it will if it affect for, um, for uh, the congregation? How it will affect the atmosphere in the church? How such decision will affect our spiritual family? How we will this help the spiritual prosperity in the church? Next five sermons, we will be looking at the ethical principles that Apostle Paul is building on. In this, it is, it is rays of light that help us see the ethical problems that happen, happen in our congregation. So, question for us, why we will look at the writings of just, just Paul? And I have answer for that. Because Paul is established the churches and writes the epistle towards the churches. And thanks to these epistles, we, are, we have an idea about the problems in the early church uh, and how apostles reacted. What a revelation Apostle Paul received as an answer to the problem on that time. His message or his messages touch on various issues and he deals with specific problems which provide a lot of room for such. Apostle Paul is a man, he is not just evangelist. He he is involved in building church, church community. Paul was primary missionary and establisher of churches uh, through the Mediterranean. He is a pastor who is taking care about churches, of churches. For Paul, theology was never something abstract apart from his uh, reality, from the reality. His writings, his writings, his epistles 
always have theological aspect. Or how to understood the scripture, how he understood, what kind of revelation he got, uh, and how he understand this idea. And on this basis, on his revelation, of his understanding Bible, he gave people the ethical recommendations. For him, theology is not business, it's not just writing books and salad or war. For him, theology, his life. This is his life. And I would like to open with you uh, Galatians uh, for, uh, chapter 1. And uh, we will read two verses from there, uh, 11 and 12. Please uh, open with me and we will read. For I would have you know, brother, brothers, that the gospel that was preached by me is not man's gospel. For I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. But I received through a revelation of who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He got this revelation. It was his base. For Paul, studying the scripture is the foundation for building churches and principles. Principles that will be interact and worked at the church, in the local church. He looks at everything in the light of gospel through revelation of Jesus Christ. He touched upon all kinds of questions, sacrifice for idols, sexual life in the marriage, um, gift of tongues, the attitude towards the uh, episcops and all elders, etc. We, we see that Paul considers can considers each issue individually. Again, their arguments and conflicts, uh, then arguments and conflicts at church, we are often, it is not a question of doctrines, but the question of morality. How to act in this or this situation? How to solve this conflict if I am right? Sometimes two different worldviews collide, two different views. We, you know, in Bible, we don't see charter of the church in the New, uh, in, in the New Testament especially. It is very hard to evaluate every single situation that we might happen. It is such more important to understand the principles that we got from Bible. Jesus Christ opens uh, the principle of kingdom of heaven. We cannot find charter of the early church. God gave Torah to Israelites, which includes a whole list of laws. But in New Testament, Christ opens principles of heaven, spirit of heaven. Uh, Christ does not cancel the law from, from, um, uh, from the Old Testament. His task was to elevate the spiritual component of law. Yeah. Many of the rules did not have the power because the theocratic, the theocratic kingdom of Israel was destroyed. And that is why it is so important to know the spirit of the law and its principles. We now we are studying um, the uh, the book of what Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy quarterly, and when Christians are reading this law, they throw them out as outdated and um, like unpractical. But if we will understand the principles that they have in themselves, then we will see their their eternal values in our lives. Even the law of Sabbath, you know, if we will see this, um, this law, uh, we, will, we will read this um, idea that your donkey shall not work on Sabbath. Remember? Yes? And uh, how many of you own donkey? I don't have it. 
It is very important to understand the principles itself, the spirit of each law, because even loving your neighbor can be brought to the point of absurdity. Since Paul, uh, since Paul writes his uh, epistles to the people who are familiar with, with his teaching, uh, we are, might not uh, always get the details of certain situation, and, the, and we might need to some guess for work. Her gospel was already preached to these people. And they know about God. They know about the law of God. They had already accepted the teaching. Paul is asking them not turn from the past. If you, if you will open Galatians uh, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, Paul asks people, do not turn from the past they say that they are on. All of this writing, except of writing uh, to the Romans, were addressed to church that he, Apostle Paul himself, has established. And he was very familiar with, with, uh, with them. He stayed in this city. Where, where the uh, cities where there were these churches. He lived with these people. It was not just one Sabbath that he preached. He lived, he worked, he taught, he preached in the city. That's why people were familiar with his teachings and what he preached about. More, moreover, for Jewish people, for Jewish diaspora, the laws and regulations were familiar and they lived according to them. Paul is always trying to solve problems in the light of the word of God. Each of his epistles has theological reflection. In other words, laying the foundation. And only after such foundation, he turns to his church with exhortation. Let's take an example from Galatians, book of Galatians. If you will open uh, chapters 5 and 6, you will see uh, this uh, pastoral exhortation where Paul, uh, Paul is looking at the questions of ethics. A lot of, uh, he, he raised a lot of, raises a lot of questions about ethics. But just chapter 5 and 6. But before four chapters, what he, uh, what, what, what about his writings before he lays a stone, theological stone, where he considers theological issue based on Torah. And he interprets Torah, Torah in the lights of fulfilled prophecy in Jesus Christ. We can see the same, uh, same thing take place in the uh, book of Romans. If we will open chapter from uh, 12 through 15, it will just uh, his pastoral, pastoral exhortations. But before, what is, was before 11, 11 chapters? This, it was theological foundation for this pastoral uh, instruction concerning the ethic of the church. However, before that, He lays a foundation considering the problem of understanding scripture in the light of coming of Christ. The same we see in the book of Hebrews, where Paul first starts with theological revelation based on scripture, and through the lights, look at the ethical questions. It's important for us to have foundation. And today I would like to invite you <coughs> open 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and we will read first five verses. It's important for us. This is foundation for Paul's ethic, for his understanding church. And, his, and he, it was his beliefs. And I, yeah, please read with me. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 1. We will read... Uh, chapter 2, excuse me, uh, and we will read from verse 1. 
And when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God, which lawful speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except what or who? Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weaknesses and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words or wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of, and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Powerful, my friends, powerful. Only with this message about Christ, Paul begins to consider all, this, all the specific situations that arise in the congregations. In this text, we see an illustration of what we talked about earlier. Paul, Paul is writing to a church where he is known and where he has been. People knew Paul. Yes, very well in Corinth. They were familiar with his life. He lived in Corinth and preached there for, for, some, for some period. Further, he say what became the leitmotif of his ministry. He talks about what is the meaning of his life. What is foundation? What is, what is his power? He talks about what must become the foundation of our life, of the church. What must become the basis for making decisions in building moral guidelines in life. Sometimes it happened that, um, that a person who, who is in church lives in two realities. In one reality, he knows about God. He knows about his words. He in church, even, even in ministry church. In the other reality, he lives in an everyday life. I remember one conversation, one situation in my life. One person was faced with a serious decision in his life. Uh, and while being in church many, many years, he, he, he was not able to make the decision towards God. We had a lo long time discussion about his, his decision. When I was talking to him, my arguments was based, uh, were based on the Bible, from my personal experience. We talked for a long time, and at the end of he said, he just said, you know, Pastor, Bible is Bible, but I will do what suits me best. Two realities. You can eat every day he, every Sabbath here. This is one reality. But what is your law for your everyday life? The cross of Christ did not become the true reality in which he lived. So it happens at church, it happens in my life, it happens in your life. Very often we trust different methods of building, organiza building organization. On we, are, we use different methods managing people. We go through training, have to be pleasant, have to react in the conflicts. And we put our trust on these approaches and the wisdom of this world. But it should be Jesus that becomes the power that changes our lives and the knowledge of God, that determines my life, my personal and spiritual growth. Remember our verse uh, from 1 Corinthians, and back to this, tour, uh, to the, uh, to this verse, when we look at the context of, of this verse, of this, this text passage, we see that in the first chapter, if you will open 1 Corinthians, first chapter, you will see that Paul is starting with the problems that are taking place in Corinth. 
He just starting to solve this problem, talking about that problem. But at the end of the chapter, it seems that he is changing his accent and start to talk about the gospel. And that is not a human teaching. Gospel is not a human teaching. And that the wisdom of God is something completely different from human reason. And so, in the center of his reflection, we see our main verse. I would like to read again this verse with you. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2 and uh, verse, uh, second verse. For I decided to know nothing among you except what? Jesus Christ. And Him crucified. One reality. This is His base. It is in the cross that we see the true wisdom. But in the chapter 4, if you will open chapter 4, we see that he goes back to look at the problems that takes place in Corinth. The power, my friends, it looks like he, he started talking about problem and realized, I need to stop. I need to have foundation. I need to share foundation for these people. And when he gave this foundation, when he shared this message, he started talking about problems at church. The power of a believer is in the cross of the cross, Christ. A lot of can become uh, my support. A lot of can become my support, my wisdom, my, uh, my method, my approach, my success. Uh, my knowledge and achievements, but the Paul's examples and his convictions calls us to repentance. He call, calls us to denounce the two realities that we are allow ourselves to, to live in. He asking us, my friends, to accept only one reality, and that is the cross of Jesus Christ. This is a precisely the key in the Paul's work with the congregation and its, its growth. Again, I would like to read at the end of my sermon today this verse. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ, Christ and Him crucified. Amen. I would like to pray with you, my dear. Dear Lord, we humble ourselves before your grace, your glory. You, you are great. You are almighty God. We ask you to forgive us. Forgive us when we built our life without you. Without your words. When we try to solve our problems without understanding your message for everybody, for us especially. God, today we pray, bless us. We ask you, bless us with your wisdom, with knowledge of your cross of Christ. Teach us is not trust of knowledge of, uh, and wisdom that we have, but trust your knowledge, trust your power. We want this church grow. We want to have harmony with you. We would like to have harmony at church. We would like to have peace in our hearts. And we would like to have, and we ask you, bless us, baptize us, revive us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.